Hey guys, it's Bethany, your crafty BFF, and I am on today with a little craft with me type video. I'm going to show you how I figured out how to make this um, beautiful embellishment, I guess you want to call it. Um, I shared um, this in a previous video for an outgoing uh, rack that I'm sending out and the response was overwhelming. You guys thought it was beautiful and so um, uh, again I want to point out that this was not my original idea. This I I 1000% scrap lifted this from Tony over at Craft Purge. She made something very similar to this. She did a project share and um, she didn't do like a tutorial or say how she folded the paper or anything. So I kind of uh, just uh, sat down and uh, started folding paper until I figured out a way to make it look somewhat like a uh, wrapped bouquet. Um, so it definitely took me longer than I'd like to admit, but hey, uh, you know uh it was an a whole new um idea for me and yeah so we are going to make this today um i thought we could i i've got um most of my flowers here all done up but i thought that we could roll a couple together i've been getting um more and more requests to do craft with me style videos and i am getting more comfortable now um to the point that um, I'm more comfortable crafting on camera. So let's do it, right? So um, again, this is just this beautiful bouquet of um, arrangement of uh, handmade flowers. And um, let's get started. Um, I started with an eight and a half by 11 sheet of vellum. Um, I assume you could, uh, in fact, Tony over at Craft Purge, she, she used a, um, a pattern paper, so I'm sure it can be done with other types of paper. Now, you can see that there is a difference between this, this one, the original that I made, this one is kind of wonky here on the side, but then I sat down last night and figured out how to make it not so wonky. Um, it is a little thinner you can see it it's a little bit thinner but not much and I think it looks it just looks a lot better it's not so wonky and um off kilter if you will <laughs> so <clears throat> we are going to get started I'm going to show you um two ways to do this you can see on this one and on the original I sewed um, the vellum here on the sides and on but on this one I did just use my barely arts and while yes you can uh, see a glue line there it's if you don't have um, if you don't have a sewing machine or whatever you it can be done by just gluing that down so let us get started I'm going to set this stuff over here to the side. <clears throat> I think I've got this figured out in a way that I can explain it. <laughs> and I'm knocking on wood here because I'm um, still not 100% um, confident in this. But here we go. Okay, so you're going to take your 8.5 by 11 sheet of um, vellum or cardstock, whatever. And... I found, I have found that the easiest way to do this is to get your ruler and start, okay, if you, if you're holding your paper, um, long ways like this, what you're going to do is just, um, point it like this so that, um, the, one of the corners, one of the corners is, um, pointing up like you know, if you're, if you're looking at it on your table, table, the, um, the corner's pointing up and we are going to measure. Um, it's just one little measurement. And so starting right there at the edge of the, um, 
paper, we're going to go down to three and seven eighths of an inch. I'm going to get in here close so I can make sure I'm marking it correctly. Um, this is the easiest way I found to show you guys, like, you know, where where to fold. Because otherwise, it's just like a guessing game to what looks, what's going to look right. So, three and seven eighths down the right side, the right hand corner of the um, corner of your paper. Okay. And then right there at that three and seven eighths inch mark, you're going to fold. <clears throat> you're going to take the, the uh, corner of the sheet of paper in your right hand. And right where we made that little pencil mark at three and seven eighths of an inch, you're going to, um, you're not going to fold it completely. You're just going to. Um, kind of uh, fold it over and and hold the corner down with your finger. Don't crease it just yet. <laughs> because the next thing you want to do is grab the left hand corner and bring it over. To about no that's not right actually no okay I'm sorry I'm sorry don't do that okay go ahead and just hold this um this down and gently start to uh, crease it don't um, don't like you know make a real big crease yet just kind of I'm sorry I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I don't know why I'm so nervous right now, but I am. So anyways, we're, um, not using a bone folder, just kind of, we're just using our fingers to pinch it together, um, because we are going to get our paper trimmer. Okay, here is mine. I'm going to move some of this stuff over to the side, and... <clears throat> What we're going to do is make one single cut, okay? Um, and bear with me while I line this up and try to explain how to do it, okay? What you want to do is that, that uh, where you folded the paper at the 3 and 7 eighths inch mark, you want to line that up to your... Um, to your cut line on your trimmer like so and then you want to make sure that this top point is right there at the um, very edge of your little um, there's like a an, an edge to your trimmer put that corner right there up to that edge and then you're going to close your um, you know, your foldy down thing, and you're going to make one single cut. It's a dia it's it's a diagonal cut because of the way that the paper is positioned here. I hope you can see it. Okay, I know it's hard to see vellum, but um, just bear with me here. And what we're gonna do um is hold this down and then slide our blade up. Okay just one time through and what you'll be left with and you can you can um I, I suggest holding this this piece down because this piece is detached now um but you're just going to remove the piece to the right that you cut off and um keep this detached piece lined up right there so, this is not attached. We did cut through it, but that's why we're going to either sew or glue just on this um, one side. So, now we can get rid of the paper trimmer. <laughs> I know this is complicated. I know. <laughs> but it's the, this is honestly the easiest way I found to do this. So, 
here we go. Um, we can go ahead and fold our left corner over. And what I've done is just um, start to fold it over and line the, the left corner now up to the very edge that we cut off. So, um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna gently start to, uh, crease that down. I'm not gonna use my bone folder just yet. And you can, now that this is up closer, you can see where I folded it over and it's left a wonky, like, diamond shape up here. And that's where we're gonna place our flower arrangement, okay? So once you get that corner lined up against this edge here, then you can go ahead and crease down this side of the vellum. And what you'll be left with is this wonky look, um, looking shape. Now, I think that this looks perfectly fine to leave it like this, but you can also do another angle cut and make it a nice uniform shape like this, like a cone. And so, um, if you want to do that, you can, or you can just leave it like this. And then what you'll do is sew, sew down, start here, sewing all the way down and then come up and then sew all the way up here to, to this side. If you're using glue, which is what I'm going to do right now, um, I'm just going to add my glue. Oh no, it dried up. No, it didn't. Just kidding. I got it working. I'm just going to lift this little edge up here and um, lay a thin layer of glue down just along the edge here and then lay this back down um that pencil mark should still be there where um where we marked that three seven three and seven eighths of an inch so it should be easy to line back up and then um just press that down until that in, and let that glue dry and like I said, um, if you don't mind that wonky shape, leave it like that. And if not, I'll go ahead and um, cut this side with you to show you how to do that part. So technically, I'm showing you two different ways to make this little bouquet embellishment. I think it looks really cute and kind of um, like a cute wonky, leaving it like this. But if you would prefer this, then what we're going to do is flip it upside down so that the part where we're going to arrange the flowers is pointing towards you. And we're going to do another diagonal cut. What I do is line up the bottom point here with, um, with the cut with the cut line and then I line it up to the very um to you can't see it to this corner right here on the cut line and so you got to kind of just fidget with it and play with it until you get get the right angle and then you can uh, close your trimmer I always recommend starting at the bottom and pushing up Look, it moved on me. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure it's where I want it to be. Because it is very finicky. <clears throat> and it moved again. Gosh darn it. Okay, there we go. And like I said, I start with my trimmer blade down at the bottom and push up. So that I get the straightest cut I can possibly get. And then this piece falls away and you're left with another, <clears throat> another piece that is, um, um, becoming detached. Mine didn't 
cut all the way through it's hanging on just by a thread there but um like i said you can easily just add your barely art glue it will dry clear you will see somewhat of a glue line but um i don't think it's that bad nobody's going to pay attention to that they're going to be looking at the beautiful flowers um that you have arranged um other and otherwise if you're if you're gonna sew then like i said you'll just start on the right side sew down and then turn it in your sewing machine and sew all the way back up on this side and that is what you're left with like i said i don't think it's too bad especially when we add um oh that did not get lined up well hey you guys wanted to craft with me so you'll see all the boo-boos and mistakes and me being uncertain just like i am in real life <laughs> so i hope you um like this style of video so there we have it that is the more uniform look um to this little bouquet wrap that we're flat bouquet wrap that we're doing and now what we will do is i don't know which one which one do I want? I think I'm going to go ahead and use the one that I sewed because I like that look better. And I have the sewing machine, so why not use it, right? So, um, let us, um, oh, I was going to show you how to, um, so on, uh, in Tony's, uh, original project share video, she points out that she has a piece of acetate here that she's put her flowers on um, using repositionable glue dots so that her uh, swap partner can easily, I got glue on my finger, can easily take them off and use them on other projects if they wanted. However, when I said that in my video, everyone said they would never take the flowers off. They would just leave it as is and put it on display. And I think you're right. I don't think I'd be able to use the flowers from this beautiful um, arrangement either. But <laughs> that's neither here nor there. So if you want the option to have the piece of acetate um, there, I thought I'd show you how to do that. Um, and what I did was just kind of real simple. Um, I have a 12 by 12 piece of acetate here. I know you can't really see it. Um, but what I did is took, take the corner of it and just slide it down into the, this, uh, now vellum pocket here. It doesn't go down very far. It's just enough to um, see where you need to cut the acetate along the line of the vellum. So I just used my scissors and freehanded it like so. And voila, there is your option to have the little piece of acetate um, to arrange your flowers on. Now, you definitely don't need to have the acetate. You can definitely use repositionable glue dots to um, put them right there on the vellum and they'll cut, it'll come off the vellum as well. Um, so there we have it. That is the little... Um, bouquet sleeve that's what i'm calling it and so now i thought we would roll a couple of these uh flowers together and then we will arrange um and uh embellish the final product okay so here i have two of the larger um rolled flowers that i cut out one in a darker pink one in a lighter pink on the original, I did all uh, just one color pink, but I thought, let's mix it up this time. So, <laughs> I don't think I've ever shown how 
I do my rolled flour, so I thought, hey, this is a good opportunity to show my subscribers that. And I'm missing something. Hold on. It must have fell here on the floor. Where did it go? Hello? Where did you go, spray bottle? I'm looking for my little Mr. Spray Bottle. And I cannot seem to find it, which is not the end of the world because you don't have to have a little Mr. Spray Bottle to do rolled flowers. It just makes it a lot easier. So I'm sorry I can't find it. I don't know what the heck happened to it. Oh my gosh, it just disappeared. So weird. Okay, so normally I would I have a little spray bottle that I would mist one just one soft little mist on the one on the front side and then one on the back side just enough to dampen it and it makes the uh, fibers in the paper um, easier to work with. Um, but since I can't find it, we are stuck with um the old the the way I did it before I learned about the uh misting the paper so okay so you have two options when it comes to rolling flowers you can use this quilling tool here um it has a little metal end with a slit in it I don't know if you can see that right there but um when you can slide a piece of paper in between that slit and it holds it you see like that this is my preferred method I much prefer this over the reverse action tweezers but these are called quilling tweezers and you can pick both of these tools up at Hobby Lobby in the paper crafting section but um, I, I use these for a lot of other things but I do not prefer to roll flowers with them I th they're they're both really cheap tools so I suggest if you if you've never done it before go ahead and pick up both and try both methods and see which way you like better everyone has their own preference so I am going to use my little quilling tool here I'm going to take my flower um, one side is text this is a textured cardstock so one side is textured and the other side is not I'm um, flipping it upside down so the textured side is on the bottom and I am going to um, just put my the end of my flower here into the quilling tool I leave about what what is that like a quarter of an inch um, on one side of of the tool and then when you're looking at the flower as a whole here like if you're looking at this one here this part in the middle is your is the end of your flower and that's where you're gonna uh, lay some hot glue down and uh, where everything will come together so just keep that in mind as you're rolling I prefer to roll towards myself. Some people, um, some people will actually do it this way. Like they'll hold it the opposite way. I'm holding it and roll this way, but I am a roll towards myself girl. So it just depends on your preference. Try it both ways and see what you find easier. Um, like I said, I'm going to leave about a quarter, maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch on one side of my tool. And then I'm just going to start rolling towards myself. Um, the most important thing about rolling flowers is that you keep this bottom straight edge um, as, like, um, as straight as you can. Like keep it lined up. The whole time that you're rolling you don't want to get it all wonky you want it to be an even uh 
flat end, if you will, when you get to the end of your rolled flower. So I take my time and I roll towards myself. Um, people um, also have a preference about how tightly they like their rolled flowers. Some people like to roll them really tight. Some people like, you know, a medium um, tightness. And then other people, like me, I prefer a more lo uh, a looser version of the flower. I like the flower to look really full and like in full bloom, if you will. So I am continuing to try to keep my uh, bottom edge here all lined up. It's getting harder, especially especially because I'm still nervous. I don't know why I'm so nervous doing this on camera. I I can do this in my sleep, honestly. But because I'm recording, it's and I feel like I'm messing up or something. Okay, so now that we're at the um, the center of the flower, the big middle part, um, what I'm going to do is um, hold. Uh oh, I let it go. <laughs> okay, I'm going to roll it back to where I had it. And I'm going to hold this um, this middle piece um, flat here. I'm going to put a finger on the top of my little rolled bud. And I'm just going to pull the quilling tool off. <clears throat> then I like to um, hold it like this. And I... I switch so that my thumb is on the top of the rolled bud and make sure it's center here in in the middle of the flower and then I start to um, let it unravel a bit like I said I am a girl who likes a looser um, more organic looking um not so tightly wound flower so something about like this is my preference now that it's where i want it to be i i'm gonna set it down i'm going to um pick up the um just you know kind of tilt the bud towards myself so that i can get in here with the hot glue gun and add a little dab of glue Still holding the bud with my finger and my thumb. I'm going to place the bud over the hot glue and then oop, and then just kind of um, tap it to make sure that the glue is taking hold, but also making sure that it, it holds the amount of tightness that I want it to hold. If now if you if you like a really tight tightly rolled one then you have to be a lot more controlled than I was right there so um maybe watch some other crafters and how they roll their flowers if you're new to this otherwise um if you like the way that looks just um you don't have to be so um you know tightly it doesn't have to be so tightly wound I like it like that so there is one done let's go ahead and do our second one like i said i would normally have my little spray bottle and missed missed it once on each side and then again i'm gonna do it um i'm gonna roll away from me this time just so you can see the two different methods um and it doesn't bother me i can do it either way so this time, the textured side of the cardstock is facing up. I'm putting my, oh, I dropped it. I'm putting my quilling tool here on the end, leaving like an eighth to a quarter of an inch on the one side of the tool. And then I am going to start rolling away from me. Again, I'm taking my time and making sure that this bottom edge is lined up and even the whole way through rolling. That's the most important part. 
Let me try to get up a little closer so you can see better. And I'm just keeping that lined up as I roll away from myself. You can always move this um, onto the other side of your finger while you're um, finishing up the roll. And the end is where it always gets a little tricky for me, at least, um, because you're you're working with more more paper in a smaller spot, right? So, okay. So now we're getting to the end here. And it's not lined up, so I am going to push this. I'm going to let it go a little bit and get it to where I can get it lined back up at the bottom. And push that down so everything is nice and even again. And then I'm going to finish rolling it without the tool. <clears throat> and again, okay, so I'm going to hold, hold the bud with my finger and my thumb. I'm going to um, make sure that this middle part of the flower is flat because that's where the, this part of the bud is going to be laid down on top of this. But first we got to add our hot glue. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little dollop. I'm going to <clears throat> let it go so and get it about as loose as I would like it to be. Like I said, I'm not tightly wound. <laughs> and there we have it. Once it's about the uh, looseness that I, the consistency that I like, then I press it down into the hot glue to make sure it's got a hold. And there we have it. Now, the reason I, um, I really wanted these to be loosey goosey is because um, I want to add the metal stamens and rhinestones to the center of them like I did on these. So that's why I like a loosey goosey um, rolled flower because I think that those stamens just add, it just takes the flowers to another level in my opinion. So these are the little metal uh, flower stamens that I get from Timu. They are super cheap, like 99 cents for an, like a hundred of them or something crazy like that and for the rolled flowers what i do is i just push the stamens all towards the middle or the little the little pokey ends so normally on a on a layered flower it would just be uh laid flat like this on to the flower um but because this is a rolled flower i'm Oh, there's two of them here. <laughs> They're stuck together really good. Okay, let me get this one. This is a single one. And if you need some help, you can use your little quilling tool and kind of uh, just start pushing the little metal prongs up and around the quilling tool so that all the prongs are standing straight up and it should look like this focus please okay look like this on the side and then that's the top view right there focus there we go <clears throat> so that's why we need a loose center so i'm gonna take my little tweezers here and make sure that there is enough space for me to fit this stamen in it looks like there is, so I'm going to uh, do just a little drop of hot glue down here in the at the bottom of the rolled flower. And then I'm going to take this guy and stuff it in the center. Like so. And then from there, you can like start to open the prongs up a little bit more. Now they won't open a, a whole lot, but you can open them up a little bit more. Um, because I am going to put one of these little rhinestones down in the middle. 
I'm going to use my little pick-me-up tool uh, from Silhouette. Get one of these are four millimeter rhinestones. I get these from Hobby Lobby in the jewelry section, and they're just a clear rhinestone. I'm gonna add just one more small drop of hot glue there in the center of the stamen, and then gently place my little rhinestone down in the center. So then we have a nice shiny little center. Not cute. I think they look so good like that. So here I'm gonna do that one more time. I already got this one um, all ready to go. So I'm just gonna add my drop of hot glue and stuff this guy down in there. If you, if you do roll your flowers super tight, you will not be able to use these metal stamens. So, just take that as a disclaimer. <laughs> now, I'm going to take this little tool and start to open, or, or maybe these. I'll, I'll use these and um, try to start opening those prongs a little bit so that I can, so that I can get that four millimeter rhinestone down in there. See, now it's opened up a little bit. I'm going to add another drop of hot glue. Pick up my little rhinestone. Not two of them, just one. And then gently place that guy down in there. Oop. Not on your side, sir. Not cooperating. So I'm going to take it back out. <laughs> Now that glue is dry, so I'm going to add another little dab. Get another rhinestone here. And hopefully this one will cooperate before the glue dries. There we go. Got it. Perfect. Okay. Now, guys, we can start to arrange our flowers in our little bouquet sleeve thingy, wrapping, bouquet wrap, whatever you want to call it. Um, by the way, I frequent, I get this um, frequently asked question, you know that pink netting stuff that I love to layer with? This stuff, um, I got this huge roll of it. It's 20 inches long and comes in five yards for $11.99 on Amazon. And if you're curious to what it's called, if you want to search it, it's called Korean Floral Wrapping Paper. I know it doesn't look anything like wrapping paper, but that's what it's called. And it will pop up there on your, um, in your Amazon feed. If you type in Korean floral wrapping paper. So that is, like I said, that people ask me what, uh, how to find that all the time. So I thought I would point that out because this is floral wrapping paper too, right? <laughs> it just reminded me of that. So funny. Okay, so I have cut out a variety of these leaves. They're the same. Um, it's the same little leaf die that I used on the original but i was feeling very indecisive and so i cut it out of some gold foil i cut it out of the like this tealy this pretty tealy green color um the the grass green that i that um i put on the original and then i also did this minty uh light minty green as well because like I said, I'm still feeling indecisive and I don't know what I want to do. But I don't think it would hurt to put more than two leaves in here or more than two cup or more than one color. So I was thinking, because I love gold foil leaves um, with my flowers. I just love it. I love that. Um extra touch it gives so i was thinking about trying 
with the gold foil. So I'm going to put this one here on the left side, let some of it hang out um, and over the edge because that's always fun. It doesn't have to be very deep in there. Um, just kind of just right underneath the lip of the little pocket that this makes. And so uh, that's about how I arranged the original ones, uh, like so. But like I said, I used that, this grass green. Um, I wonder, I'm just curious, and I thought I would play a little bit since we're doing a craft with me. Um, and see if they look good together. I don't know. I don't, I don't really like that. I like that better than I like the dark green. But the dark green is so striking on this, I think. I don't know. I'm so, I'm so indecisive. What about this one? What do you guys think? I wish you could tell me. Maybe I need to do a live sometime. And I don't know how to do it, but I'm sure I could figure it out. And then you guys could tell me what to do. What do you guys think? Do we like the teal with the gold? Or do we like the gold by itself? Or do we like the minty green with the gold? I'm kind of feeling the teal green with the gold. So I'm thinking two golds here on the sides. Like so. Excuse me while I fuss with this. Well, they came, they came untucked, but you get the idea. So, on the sides for those, and then I'm thinking this one more in the middle and up, and, and up a little bit taller. What do we think? I kind of like that. I like the, I like the two tones. I like that there's more leaves. Um, it looks a lot fuller than this one does. I think I like that. I think I like it. So, what I did before um, I actually glued anything down with the, uh, the removable adhesive dots is I took my flowers and I kind of or just arranged them with no adhesives to see to see what I liked. Now I have these two different colors. They are all about the same size. Give or take a little bit because, you know, the rolling they the, the rolling does change the size. But we've got the dark pink and the light pink here. And I do have 12 of them, so we have a dozen roses. And then I'm thinking maybe like one there, another, maybe one up here. Ooh. Maybe like this. Maybe like this. And then maybe that there. And then we got another dark one here, and then I'm thinking right there and right there. Does it look too busy, guys? Does that third leaf make it look too busy? I'm afraid it looks too busy. And of course, I can't really pick it up and bring it closer either. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Do we think it looks too busy? Zoom out. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to try to take this guy away and see what we're left with. Hmm. 
You know, the flowers aren't arranged how I had them, but close enough, right? <laughs> what do we think? I think I like it better without the green. I think I like just the gold this time. I just love pink and gold together. Mm, but I feel like I'm going to regret it if I don't do any green. Okay. See, my indecisiveness is coming out. This is why I don't... I've. I've always been nervous to do craft with these. Okay. But I know I'm not the only indecisive crafter out there. Comment down below if you're super indecisive too. I need to know. I'm not alone. So what about this mint, this light mint green? I think that, I think somehow it makes it look a little less busy than that darker green. I think I can live with that with the um flower arrangement that i had so what i'm gonna do is go ahead Ooh, and i'm not gonna use the acetate this time but if you were going to use the acetate now would be the time to place it place it where you want it and add um a removable adhesive dot down here at the bottom so that the acetate stays in place right and then you would add some uh removable adhesive dots to your leaves and place them down and then follow suit with the flowers but because we're not doing the acetate now i am just going to glue these leaves down straight to the vellum it doesn't have to be perfect. But I do want some hanging out the side. I want it like hanging over the, the vellum edge like so. And I'm going to get my other gold one. Ooh, should I do the, should I do the mint green first? first no no i'm gonna do the gold first see more indecisiveness oh man okay there we go added my glue to this other one i'm gonna open this little pocket here and place it down about like that Again, having it hang off the edge just a little bit. Wipe that glue away. And now I'm going to add this. I think I'm going to do the other minty green one because it seems to be a little more stable, not so wonky. And then I'm just going to randomly add some glue to the back of the leaves. I'm not even worried about the stem. Um you know making sure the stem gets glued down or anything because the leaves will keep it glued down just fine am gonna tuck these guys in here at the bottom and then no no we're not we're gonna that's not even gonna get tucked in actually the green one's not getting tucked in i'm gonna put it up towards the top so that it's hanging over the edge of the vellum as well just so we have something there at the top so there's something all around the edge i like that look making sure that those leaves get pressed down add some more glue to this guy right here because he's not wanting to stick so there we go there's that part done this is getting to be quite the long video. Um, I'm not even going to fuss with the removable adhesive dots. I am just going to glue these bad boys down. I think I'm going to just keep this. Either I'm either going to keep this on display in my craft room. Or I'm going to 
send it to someone or maybe include it in my 1000 subbies giveaway that I'm going to do. That would be a nice little embellishment to include, wouldn't it? I think so. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give this one away to the lucky winner of my 1000 subbies giveaway. The last time I checked, I was sitting at 900 and 66 subscribers, I believe. So I am inching my way towards a thousand every day. I'm so grateful to you guys who are subscribed and come and watch the videos. And I really hope you're still with me 15 minutes in. Um, but hey, I like I said, um, more and more people are requesting that I do these types of craft with me videos and I am here to please my subscribers so I'm trying to get out of my head and and um, be more prepared to do things like this um, so now I'm just kind of seeing where I want these flowers to go and I think I think that's about it i think that's what we're gonna go with right there i think it looks good i'm gonna use my hot glue um so we don't have to wait forever for the barely arts to dry and i'm just gonna start gluing them down in about this arrangement oh <laughs> well that moved out one went flying away from me. And this one went up here. Make sure we get it on the vellum. <laughs> mm, let's see. I think I want a light pink one here. It is on the vellum, right? Oh, yeah, that's right on the edge. So I'm going to scoot that in some. Let me dump these off and see which ones are glued and which aren't. Because <laughs> I, I lost count. Okay, let's do a light pink one down here. I'm kind of trying to do, um, you know, dark and then light, dark and then light. Just to give it some variety. And then we have two lights and a dark left. So let's do this one here. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is cracking. I've been talking too much, apparently. And here goes our last one. Oh, I hope it looks as good as I think it does with that third leaf. I'm kind of regretting adding the third leaf uh, set of leaves now, but... Let me know what you guys think. I I like it. I'm just worried it's a little too busy. However, we're not done just yet. Oh, look. I almost missed one of our flowers. Um, so we got one more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yep. We got one more to put somewhere. So we're going to put right there. Right here. Yeah, let's put it right there. Okay, there we go. And um, the last thing we're going to do together is add this uh, little ribbon and butterfly embellishment because I think it really sets it off and just gives it that finishing touch. Love it, love it, love it. Um, I, someone um, gifted me some of this ribbon in Happy Mail. I... <laughs> Uh, it was so long ago now, I cannot remember who it was, but, um, I've been saving it because I'm like, it's going to make a really cute project one of these days. And then when I saw Tony use it on, on her little bouquet project, I knew, I knew I had to use it too. So what I'm doing is just kind of arranging this where I think I'm not actually going to tie a bow here because the butterfly goes over that and you don't see any bow at all so 
I just kind of tied a tied a loose knot here and then I let some hang down I think I'm gonna let a little more hang down on this one than I did on the original might put it. Mm. and let me get my butter my little butterfly embellishment that was also gifted to me in happy mail um, it's almost the exact same as this one so let's see where he lands if I put you gotta make sure it looks good all together so it comes down a little bit oh, now everything's starting to get in the way <laughs> there's some hot glue strings I will take care of those here in a second I'm just gonna Tie that knot. Let that hang down there. And then I'm going to trim. I like, I love the way that this ribbon flows. It's so like, just beautifully curled, naturally curled or something. I don't know how to explain it, but okay. Let's position this. Make sure those are about the same length. The knots in the middle. I think I like that. I like the longer flowing tails versus the shorter one. I don't hate the short ones either, but you know. And we can always trim them if we want. And then we're going to just put our butterfly right there. I think it's the perfect finishing touch I'm gonna add just a little bit of hot glue under this knot so that it kind of stays in place there and then I am going to add some hot glue to the back of this butterfly so I'm already regretting not doing the dark green leaves. I wish I would have stuck to my guns on that and just did the, the grass green leaves again. But I didn't. I wanted to do something a little different this time. Yeah, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. But I think I like this darker green better. What do you guys think? What's your favorite? Do you like the do you like the wonky style like the way that this one is kind of wonky on the side or do you like the more straight and narrow style um do you like the dark leaves or the gold and light leaves let me know in the comments love 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 these um display pieces is what i'm gonna call them because they're i mean it's too big to be an embellishment right <laughs> okay guys i'm coming up on an hour and um that means it's going to be a nightmare to upload this video to youtube <clears throat> so i will leave you with this and the finishing touch that i did to this one was add some wink of stella in the clear silver color to the leaves of course i'm not going to add them to the um to the gold leaves because that would kind of be redundant sparkle on sparkle right um i'm just kind of messily adding them adding this link of stella to the to the leaves and then i even went over the edges of the flowers just to give it a little more Va -va -voom, a little more interest so when people look close they see some more even more sparkle it's all about the little details for me including this these hot glue strings that i'm seeing everywhere now so in case you didn't know how to get rid of hot glue strings i'm gonna give you one more tip before i go of course, my, my heat embossing gun does not reach all the way up here to my desk because of where it's plugged in. But um, if you have a heat embossing gun, um, 
turn it on. Mine is going to sound loud. It's like this. And I am just going to run my heat embossing tool over um, all these hot glue strings. And the heat like evaporates the glue strings and they are gone. So give me just a second. Sorry, I can't show you this on camera, but I'm just waving the little heat embossing gun over each flower individually to make sure that I'm getting all of the glue strings. I hope you can hear me over this. <laughs> I'll explain that again just in case you can't hear me. Okay, I think I about got them all for some of the um, glue underneath melted as well, but it will dry. Okay, it will dry back. Okay, so um, in case you couldn't hear me over the heat embossing gun, I just took the heat embossing gun and um, ran it over each individual flower to make sure I get all of the glue strings um, off of my project. It does, the heat makes the uh, glue strings like evaporate into thin air almost. Um, so they disappear and you don't have to deal with the unsightly hot glue strings. So there we have it guys. There is how I made this gorgeous um little faux bouquet of handmade flowers um if um i hope you enjoyed this craft with me style video if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments down below and i will get back to you other than that um i hope you uh Follow the little tutorial I had in this video and make one of these yourself. If you do, make sure to tag me on Instagram so I can see your beautiful work. Okay, guys? Thanks so much for watching. Have a good night. Bye.